This program is brought to you by Emory University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the TET on and TET off systems. It's a way of regulating gene expression. And the first thing to know is that this is a essentially completely artificial, really a hijacking of a bacterial system. And in the bacteria, uh, not in our system, which is in cell culture or in animals, but in the bacteria, what happens is that the TET genes are responsible for producing proteins that uh, allow the bacteria to be resistant to tetracycline. And it looks like this. Uh, you have a TET operator, uh, which is a DNA binding sequence. Uh, here you have the TET genes. On a separate gene, you have the TET repressor here. Uh, and it encodes a protein that binds to the TET operator. So we would just take this and we put this operator uh, binding protein right here. This is the TET repressor here in pink binding to the operator sequence of the TET operon. As long as this repressor protein is bound, the TET genes are off. Uh, if in fact the bacterium is exposed to tetracycline, which is an antibiotic, it can kill the bacteria, the TET repressor protein binds to tetracycline and it falls off. Uh, this allows transcription to occur uh, of this genes and you get the TET proteins and the bacterium can be uh, therefore resistant to tetracycline. So in our system, it's a modification of this. So in our system, we have a, a DNA, we have the operator sequence, we have our target genes, which could be MYC or uh, some other uh, target gene uh, in our system. We actually, they use MYC several times. And the, we're going to take an, a modified repressor. So it's not the repressor that's in the bacteria. It's, a, it's an altered version. It's a fusion protein. So at the DNA level, you take a repressor gene and fuse it to another gene. In this case, they use one called VP16. It's an activator. So instead of a repressor when it binds, turning off a gene, when this fusion protein here, right? So if we take this fusion protein that's part repressor, part VP16, when this thing binds to uh, the operator, the DNA sequence, then the target genes are on. And in fact, you would get a ton of transcription, right? You get lots and lots of RNA. Okay, so if the fusion protein is bound here, then you get transcription. So essentially it's the opposite of what happens in the bacterial system. Now, there's two forms of this fusion repressor protein. One of them falls off uh, when tetracycline or doxycycline, which is what's used in the experiments, doxycycline looks just like tetracycline and it works the same. It's able to bind to the repressor. Uh, there is one system in which the repressor falls off when tetracycline or doxycycline binds to it. That mimics uh, what we would see in the bacteria. In the other system, the repressor has been mutated so that it, it binds to tetracycline and that is actually what allows it to bind to the operator. Again, that's the opposite of what you would find in the bacterial system, but it works for us. And so again, um, in the TET on system, uh, the binding of doxycycline causes the protein to stick to the operator and allows for activation of target genes. In the TET off system, the binding of doxycycline causes that fusion protein to fall off the operator and turns off transcription. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.